this little short presentation here is just something that we put together. It's a very much shortened version of what we did with the missionaries in India. My name is Pam Holloway. I am a Masters of Science trained registered nurse. I was an Army Nurse Corps nurse and I worked to build the Army Wellbeing Program and send that out Army-wide. I also worked in environmental health and did a lot of work with some of the top integrated med docs from around the world, richly, richly blessed. Many of them were awesome followers of Christ and the Lord has just used those times and those experiences and those teachings and I didn't understand why until now. So the, the blessing, is, the beauty is, is you can be over 50 years old and figure out what your mission is. So, hallelujah, praise the Lord for that one, right? It's all Him. So I'm going to go through a quick presentation from the practical standpoint of what's going on. I'm also going to be tying some things in regarding the spiritual and emotional, physical. Make it no mistake, this attack has a strong spiritual root to it, okay? Here's my disclaimer. See your doctor. I am not your doctor. I am not your health care provider. I am purely providing information. I'm your reference librarian. <laughs> and, and what we're doing is we're rapidly building out a model for within the church. Holy Spirit is your healer. He is the healer. Okay? So Holy Spirit is guiding your healing. Our job as prayer ministry team and as medical information people and things like that is simply to come alongside and be your reference librarians. Nothing more. All things you take before him and you weigh in prayer. All the information in the world is worthless unless it's discerned through the Holy Spirit and applied specifically to you as your personal revelation, re revelation for you. Same thing from scripture, right? In fact, a lot of times it comes exactly through our scripture. So with that, next slide, please. What you're gonna see here is there are two threats to life, fear and lack of knowledge. Scripture says my people perish for lack of knowledge. And I gotta tell you, for the last 20 years now especially, I have watched the enemy steal, kill, and destroy because of lack of knowledge. I have watched lies come through about the temple, and I have watched people die as a result. Very wonderful, beautiful, well-meaning, well-intentioned Christians who are being completely taken into treatment modalities and things like that that are not of the Lord. It's time to say enough. It's time to take back this temple. It's His. So with that, fear, when we make decisions from a position of fear, we're not making decisions out of our right mind. We're not making decisions out of logic. We're making decisions out of, oh my goodness, the bear's gonna eat me. And if any of you have ever been in a position where you've been really scared and you've been trying to do a simple task, all of a sudden you can't even do this stupid simple task, and it's because your logic brain, your prefrontal cortex is shut off at that point and your limbic system's just saying, run away, run away. That's what's happened with this COVID situation. That has been the situation that has been pushed on us for this over this past year. It has been really trying to get us to focus on the fear. We've just had a beautiful sermon on fear of man versus fear of God. That is not the way the Lord works. The only thing we hang on to is the fear of him. And by that, then, we no longer have the fear of man. And we start making decisions from our right mind. So the first thing a lot of us need to do right now, shut off the news. Shut off everything that is bringing in negative influence into your home. Get into your prayer, get into your worship, and when stuff starts happening, take a step back and say, okay, Lord, what's going on? Seek his face, seek him in prayer, and just wait for that peace and that rest to come over you so you can start making decisions appropriately. If you do happen to enter into the medical system, medical system's going to come at you with a ton of fear. They're going to say, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, and you've got to do it right now. You've got to do it right now. 
Okay. Take that with a grain of salt. Take your moment to pray and start to work through things. Okay. One of the things that we have to do is stay in the word right now. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. And the biggest thing that I've found that really has helped me is to pray aloud and to say, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. There's that extra measure that he makes up for right now that we really need the help in doing. So with that, I am going to go through and I'm going to address what are the three causes of disease. Next slide, please. We have three things that really cause dis ease in the body. It's nutritional deficiencies, toxin overload, and stress overload. The number one thing that I have found with COVID is the stress overload, the fear response. I have watched people who have hit COVID <coughs> pop right back out. I have watched people hit COVID and drag through it. And the fear component has been a huge component of that. A lot of people in a position of fear will constantly be searching for more information. Research, 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 research. But all the information they're getting is man's knowledge. They're not seeking the Lord's knowledge. And that is holding them back. It's distracting them and it's pulling them off target from hearing. That's not to say that we don't need good information. And that's part of the reason why I'm really trying to get this email list going and start getting the website with all the information behind a membership page so that I can give you good information without getting shut down. It's because of the fact that I want you to have good information and I also want it washed by the blood of the Lamb coming through the Holy Spirit. Everything needs to be empowering and focused on actions, things that we can do that are focused according to the Lord. You can see right up there that when we get the mental and the emotional, it comes like a shadow over us and it just starts beating us down. We gotta break that off. Okay, the one thing I've learned about COVID real loud and clear is it has a very strong spiritual root. It really has a strong spiritual component to it and we have gotta go after that spiritual root. So if any of you are called to serve in that area and prayer ministry your thing, please seek out our prayer ministry teams, okay? We're gonna be doing a lot more prayer work as we continue to move through this. And by the way, I know this sounds weird. People are like this COVID thing. It's, it's horrible, it's awful, it's everything else. Except for I'm watching God use it for good. I'm watching God use it to break things off. I'm watching him use it to circumcise hearts. And it's painful. I won't lie, it's painful. But when you come out the other side, the freedom is beautiful. So hang on to it, and if you're one of those ones who's got, you know, falling into that long hauler syndrome and you're dragging, let's pray through it, let's do the physical tools, let's get the stuff broken off, and get you being the strong, vibrant warrior each and every person in this room is meant to be. And oh, by the way, your age doesn't matter. You are all called to be physically healthy, joyful, making others jealous for Christ. And guess what? We can't make others jealous for Christ if we're suffering sick events. That doesn't mean that we don't have trials. It doesn't mean we don't go through hard things. But it means the joy of the Lord is radiant over us every single step of the way. Regarding the nutrition side, your food choices right now matter. They really matter. Sugar is a toxin, more addictive than cocaine. And I gotta tell you, COVID loves sugar. COVID also like, loves all the refined, processed, nasty foods that are out there. Okay, this is a time where it's good to start cooking more than ever. It's really good to go keto, really good to go keto. Feed that brain. By the way, sugar also increases fear and anxiety. You don't wanna go there either. Look at the fats that you're cooking with. Stay away from the, the, the canola oil, the, those types of vegetable oils and things like that. Stay away from the margarine, that stuff's deadly. Okay, all of those things increase inflammation in the body and make it a lot easier for things like COVID to take hold. The other thing is, is you need to start paying attention to your food sourcing. We are starting to see some really funky stuff coming down right now. And there's gonna be a lot of stuff happening to our food supply over the next year. It is going to be critical to take hold of your food supply. A lot of us are gonna to need to start learning how to grow food. 
We're going to have to learn to get to know our local farmers. Yeah, we're going to end up paying a little bit more for food, because guess what? The food that we've been eating is all subsidized by the government. And here's the deal. There's even talk, and experiments, by the way, that they're going to start delivering your vaccines through your food. Yes, they're looking at starting to deliver vaccines through your food supply. So eating out and doing a lot of that stuff, depending upon how far they actually get down this road without the Lord intervening or something else happening, we are going to a time where we are going to be truly living in the world and not of the world in order to take care of this temple. Toxin overload, air, water, lifestyle, electrosmog. Um, anyone who's got smart watches, please consider getting a dumb watch. No joke. Um, what you're doing is you're bombarding your body with electrosmog signals, not good for your body. Okay, it's gonna make it a lot harder for your body to heal as well as to stay healthy. Our bodies were never intended to be bombarded with all of the electrical radio signals, magnetic frequencies that our bodies are encountering every day, 24 seven now. One of the simple things you can do is shut off your Wi-Fi at night. Give your body a rest. That's not nearly enough, but it's at least a start. Get outside, spend time outside, get your face in the sun, get your feet barefoot on the ground, get out in nature, do what they call, what the, the new age group calls nature bathing. Yes. But it actually really is good for your body, and there's a reason why we all live here in Colorado, right? It's because we, we love the outdoors. Next slide, please. This right here is a little bit of what we're doing for prevention as well as intervention for COVID. Dr. Leigh Erin Keneally is a colleague of mine. She is the co-author of the Academy of Comprehensive Integrated Medicine Protocol that we put together last August and it was published. Um, and what it was is it was really high dose nutraceuticals in a protocol that had a severe impact on COVID. 50,000 patients treated over a 13 month time frame. These are not your healthy, yay, I'm just coming in for my doctor's visit patients. A lot of these patients are cancer patients. <coughs> a lot of these patients are the sickest of the sick autoimmune patients. Dr. Keneally does not get your light cases. She runs one of the top integrated med clinics in the country outside of LA. She sees 800 to 1,000 patients a month through her clinic. She's seen over 50,000 patients in 13 months. There should have been 30 COVID deaths. There were zero COVID deaths and a mild, mild cases of COVID. We can take people that are sick and keep them from getting down with COVID. I really need you to hear this. We can take people who are sick and keep them from going down hard with COVID. The key is prevention and the key is early intervention. Okay, and you can see all those studies that, that talk about the nutraceuticals that we're using there. The real key is the D3, C, magnesium, zinc, and quercetin. Those very items that are out there at that table right now. By the way, Nutramedics is a phenomenal Christian company that's been around since the 1980s. It started out of Peru. He was a missionary pilot in Peru. His wife is Peruvian. They saw all of these great things that the, the medicine men were doing in Peru with the herbs. They took that, they turned it into the company called Nutramedics. Today, it is an international company, strong Christian focus. 50% of all their profits go to medical missions around the world. They walk their talk. If you're gonna buy nutraceuticals, pe people, please buy it from a Christian company. We really need to be supporting the body of Christ, and these guys are moving out hard. They did something unheard of. They're allowing us to sell their supplements at a 30% discount from retail, and their stuff is super high quality. So information's all back there. Um, and they also, by the way, at their cost, shipped all those supplements to us overnight from Florida. The founder of the company called me and jokingly said, you do realize we could go to dinner together in Switzerland for this price, don't you? And I said, that'd be nice. I'd rather have the supplements. <laughs> so 
awesome, awesome company. Keep them in your prayers. And by the way, they are actually praying for our church right now as we've been walking through this and they've been calling and checking and nine o'clock at night, I get a phone call from the founder saying, how are you guys doing? We're praying for you. And oh, by the way, we think your church is starting a model that's gonna go to churches around the country. So please be praying into that, guys. Next slide, please. COVID illness symptom progression, stage one, viral proliferation, early stage. This is the stage that if you catch it there, you can be like Pastor Steve, who I think was maybe down for eight hours. Okay? Um, this is the stage that if you have a strong foundation, as Pastor Steve is, by the way, I love it. I go to have a meeting with him, the guy's dropping and doing push-ups as we're having our meeting. Okay? There's a model there to learn from. Okay? He is truly working on keeping his temple healthy and vibrant. Okay? And that is a blessing. It's very unusual for a pastor. It's a blessing. So if we catch it in this first stage, what we're really seeing is the fatigue, the body aches, and the brain fog. And by the way, isn't it just like the enemy, the first thing he's gonna try to do is take out your brain so you can't be smart enough to think about treating? Hello, let me take out your awareness so that you're too much in a daze to understand what you need to be walking out and doing to heal. The second thing that we'll see is we will actually see what looks like a sinus infection. We're not seeing the fever typically right off the bat. We're typically seeing the sinus infection symptoms and people just think they're getting a sinus infection. Okay, even if it is a sinus infection, this works for that too. Okay, a lot of people will think, well, maybe I should go get a COVID test at this point. What's the answer to that? No, don't test, treat. Don't test, treat. There is a test we want to take later, and I'll tell you guys about that. But we don't want to test. The only thing that's happening is you're now on the little health department's list, and the health department's going to try to follow up and do all their contact tracing and try to tell you what you got to do. Yeah, not helpful. So don't test, just treat. Start at stage one. If you start with the early outpatient protocol, which is back there on those tables in, in stage one, you're barely gonna hit a blip, guys. And here's what's the real key. Get those vitamin D levels up fast. We're talking 100,000 units a day, as long as you have symptoms. We need to bring the K2 on board. That can come a little bit later. We need to get the magnesium on board. That can come a little later too. But get those D3 levels up fast. The average American has a D3 level of 30 in the blood. What we want to see for D3 levels is 80 to 120 in the blood. What does it take to get there? It takes a million units of vitamin D to raise the blood level by 20 units, which means most of us are down 3 million units to start with. Are there concerns of toxicity? So far from what we've seen from treating missionaries and patients in, in makeshift COVID hospitals that have been set up all over India, as well as what we've seen here in the United States, as well as my own personal experience, I have personally seen people take three million units of vitamin D in a 24 hour period. They went into the hospital and through some wonderful methodologies. We were able to make sure that they got their three million units of vitamin D, their liposomal glutathione, and in 24 hours, they were discharged from the hospital. In 48 hours, they were completely off oxygen. Three days after that, they were moving to another state. Okay, that vitamin D is really critical. Regarding toxicity, if you have kidney disease, if you have renal problems, if you have a history of kidney stones, just talk to me. Don't take calcium during this time either, by the way, guys. Okay, because it does rate, it can raise the calcium levels in the blood a little bit. What we have we seen for negative reaction? What we've seen is with people who actually were able to get their vitamin D levels all the way up over 120, their BUN creatinine level, which tells me that their kidneys are functioning, they're, they're struggling a little bit, that, got out of whack. As soon as we brought the K2 on board, it came right back down. And it's gonna be really hard for you guys to get over 120. <laughs> Stage two, it moves from that dry cough into that cough, chest pressure, and difficulty breathing. This is a real warning sign. You're about to hit the cliff. Sometimes people will all of a sudden feel better, like they feel like they're coming out of it. And then they crash. Okay, 
It's like the body's trying to do a last minute rally and then you can't make it and it crashes. So if you get into this stage two, this is where we really need to be treating intensively. This is also where it starts getting helpful to go ahead and do that, that IV with glutathione and go ahead and front load the D and the C and things like that, but just know they can't give you enough via the IV according to their protocol. We give, the, we give what they give and then we add the protocol on top of that. By the way, the only thing that IV is doing is buying you 24 to 48 hours of time. It is not treatment in itself, so do not make the mistake of just thinking that's treatment. And then stage three, it slides into the blood clots. And that's when we start seeing the O2 sats, the oxygen in the blood level, will drop below 90. The heart rate will come up above 100. And by the way, your first symptom is the heart rate will come up above 100. So if you see someone where all of a sudden that heart rate is starting to pound and they're starting to feel that pounding chest and they're feeling, they're getting ready to drop those O2 sats right through the floor on you. And this is the stage that we really need to move, be moving fast. So next slide, please. In early to mid-intervention, nebulizing really does help. Nebulizing is a fabulous tool. Each of us should have a nebulizer in our home, one per family. Okay, if, if families, depending upon their situation, they can each get their own oxygen mask. There's a wonderful video here that will show you how to use a nebulizer. I'm not gonna spend time on that now. But having a nebulizer in your home does multiple things. It's prevention as well as intervention. What it will do is it will actually destroy the virus bacteria, foreign substance, before it even gets a chance to get into your bloodstream. Okay, so like after you take a flight on the plane, Awesome time to nebulize, okay? So this has multiple uses. Other than that, it also goes systemic throughout the blood, through the body. So it'll actually increase the hydrogen and the oxygen levels in the body, which then helps with NRF2, NAD, and a whole bunch of anti-aging things. So it's a little inexpensive method to do some amazing things there. Next slide, please. So at the core, what do we really need to be looking at? What we found is, is that those who had severe vitamin D deficiency had a 50% probability of death, while those with vitamin D levels over 10 had a 5% mortality risk. So those who have severe deficiency. Okay, now the average is 30. So you're not gonna die, but you are gonna feel pretty good, darn and sick. So what we found is 13 randomized control trials, vitamin D reduced mortality by 62%. And that was even administered to people on ventilators and things like that. One amazing story I saw was a 35-year-old. Um, this was sent to me by a, a wonderful uh, pharmacist friend who is helping to treat many people in India. The slide, the, the lung, the lung x-ray was a total whiteout. 35-year-old, 50% oxygen levels, couldn't even keep them going on the ventilator. They're, they're saying, get ready to say goodbye to the family. Okay, five million units of vitamin D in four days. Could not get, him, get the, anyone to give him glutathione, which also would have been really helpful in this situation. Could not get ivermectin on board, also would have been really helpful in this situation. Um, and what happened is in four days, five days, his O2 sats were back up to the 90s. The lung still has some diffusion in it, but much clearer. And without oxygen, his O2 sats were 85. Three days after that, he was discharged and went home. He's fine. Okay, miracles are happening, but we have to take the right action. Here's the key, only get your D3 from well-known companies. It's a lot of D3 to be taking, so what we have back there is 50,000 units per pill. Basically, guys, that is a year's worth of vitamin D sitting back there in 100 pill bottle, if you're just doing maintenance. Other than that, B1 also is helpful, and vitamin C is the other critical component. So right now, most of us need to be doing 10,000 units of D a day after a 100,000 unit first dose um, if you are starting to get any symptoms whatsoever. And so with all that, here's the bottom line. Pastor Steve said something really critical today. He said, I will build my church on the rock and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What's the church? 
it's each one of you sitting in this room, right? So if you're the church, what's the Holy Spirit's temple? This is the Holy Spirit's temple. This. God's being really nice and letting me reside in this body. But the reality of the situation is 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 is extremely clear. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you are bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. We're to be glorifying him in this body. So if the Holy Spirit's temple is my body, and God tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God, then I have a question. God loves his temple. Am I loving his temple? Am I treating his temple the way that he wants me to treat it? It's his. I just get to live in it. It's his. For too long, we've been all taught the lie that we just loan our bodies to God every now and then. No. This whole entity that is standing in front of you is his. So everything we need to do we need to do that with that in mind. And that doesn't mean don't have fun. It doesn't mean never eat chocolate again. It certainly doesn't mean never have a dessert again. But it means to do that according to what the Holy Spirit teaches. And to do that according to what the Holy Spirit guides you in. And here's the deal. The healthier this temple is, the more you can play every now and then and have fun and not have a negative impact. It's all things in balance. The rule used to be 80-20. 80% healthy and on target and 20% not. These days, due to the level of illness we're seeing, we don't have the bandwidth to do that anymore. So let's get this temple healthy so we can go back to the 80-20 rule. And we can play and have fun with it again. But the biggest thing I would say, just to start, is ask him every single step of the way before you put anything in your mouth, before you do anything to your body, before you put lotion on your skin. Is this the lotion the Lord would want me to use on my skin? Because anything that touches your skin goes right into your body, guys. So just, just keep that in mind and start just asking him those questions throughout the day and just get so you're in a little bit more of understanding and obedience with him. Okay? And thank you so much for letting me talk on this. This is just the, the precursor, guys. Pastor Steve's made it very clear we're going to be going much farther.